care of him, Moran. Yes, Watson. Yes. A good day for the countryside in any event, I think. Hmm. I beg your pardon, Holmes? We shall be making a journey into the country. I am not deaf. Where to in the country? Herefordshire. Oh, Herefordshire. <laughs> the Boscombe Valley. Boscombe Valley, eh? <laughs> Watson, don't keep repeating me. Yes, it's a farming area. The cattle and cider are particularly well spoken of. Quite one of my favourite spots. Just one moment. Boscombe Valley. Mm -hmm. The case of a son murdering his father. I have it all here before me, or as much as is known at the moment. It's a genuine puzzle, Watson. A collection of jagged pieces that must be fitted together to make a complete picture. Personalities at least emerge fairly clearly amid an atmosphere of domestic discord. To begin with, it would seem, some trouble over a horse. Ah, uh, you black devil! Play games with me, would you? What the devil do you think you're doing, Moran? You'll never get him to answer all while you treat him like that, Mr. Uh, Darby. Mr. James knows how to handle him. Ah, oh, Mr. James, eh? Huh? And where is the whelp? Well, maybe you'd like to take his medicine for it. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want a damned horse anyhow. <laughs> Right. A rat? A rat? <laughs> <laughs> Can I assist you? No, I can manage. Oh, young McCarthy is accused of murdering his own father. Yes, Watson, of clubbing him to death with the butt of a shotgun. Unnatural. Mm. The evidence is circumstantial, but the case against the young man 
Looks exceedingly grave. Mm. And you are not altogether sure that you will be able to help him, hmm? Well, our good friend Inspector Lanner is admirably detailed in his information. He tells us, for instance, that McCarthy Sr., the dead man, was a much-travelled individual. He would spent a long period of time in Australia, together with another resident of the Boscombe Valley, a Mr. John Turner, who is the largest landed proprietor in that part of Herefordshire. Colonials. <laughs> Watson, Mr. Turner made a considerable fortune prospecting for gold in Victoria. So no doubt even life in the colonies can have its rewards. Mm. Well, in my experience... And now, if you please, silence. I was only going to say... Until Reading, I must undertake a more detailed study of this case. get mixed up in a thing like this. Even if Bill McCarthy wasn't the oldest mate. Please sit down, Father. You're not supposed to be out of bed and you're certainly not supposed to be smoking. Ah. Uh, times are a man can't stick to his bed no longer. It's that young McCarthy, isn't it? Come on, out with it at last. I warned you against him, Alice, but you took up with him all the same. And now, even when he's done murder, you mean to try to get him off? James hasn't done murder. What have you got against him? He killed his own father, didn't he? Hmm? His father! Isn't that so, Inspector? Well, Mr. Turner, the evidence is alarming. No. There now, and still you find a place in your heart for him. What's the matter with you, girl? From the very start, I told you the truth about him. I told you that... Oh. Father! Oh, father! Oh. His heart, Miss Turner? He's been far too active a man ever to take to the life of an invalid. But he's wrong about James. He didn't kill his father. He couldn't have done. I know it. Nothing! <laughs> huh? Yes, Watson. A diverting little murder. But I have no doubt that somewhere among the blood and gore we shall find the correct solution. Indeed, Holmes. After all, the art of detection is simply seeing beyond appearances to the hidden truth. For instance, although I've had no occasion to enter your bedroom for some weeks now, it is quite evident to me that you have changed your furniture round. Good heavens, Holmes. How in the world do you know that? <laughs> your shaving. It is less precise on the left-hand side of your face, proving that the source of light, your window, must now be on your right. Conclusion? You have shifted your dressing table. In so small a space, such a change would necessitate moving everything else. As for you, sir, I am aware, of course, that you are a tobacco merchant from Bristol, a secret drinker, and that at one time of your life you spent some years at sea. But why? But why, oh why, do you try to conceal the fact that you are such a profound admirer of Miss Marie Corelli? Oh, sir. <laughs> The dining car. That's <laughs> uh, good. We should get to Ross in time for the inquest. There is some evidence from a 14-year-old girl, Miss Patience Moran, that I regard as vital. It, it were about 12 o'clock, I think, sir. I'd gone down to Boscombe Pool to pick some flowers.
And you have nothing further to tell us. <laughs> no, sir. Very well, you may step down. Uh, Mr. Moran. Sir. Mr. James McCarthy. You are Mr. James McCarthy. I am, sir. Did you visit the Boscombe Pool at about noon on June the 10th? I did, sir. And did you there meet and speak with your late father? I did. In fact, you quarrelled with him, did you not? You lost your temper in argument and threatened him with the butt of the shotgun you were carrying. That is so. Now, had you an arrangement to meet your father at the Boscombe Pool? No, no, How I'm then not. did you happen to encounter him? It was an accident. Would you speak up, please? I'd been into Ross and certain business, and when I returned home, I decided at once to go out shooting. Shooting? Yes. I don't know why I decided that. I'd no idea my father had also gone down to the pool. It wasn't a place he frequented much. But there in the woods, I heard the cry of Cooey. What cry? Cooey, sir. This cry of uh, Cooey, it was one often used by your father? Yes, it's an Australian bush call. He generally used it when he wanted me. But he could not have meant it for you on this occasion. I'm sorry? According to your own testimony, he could hardly have known that you were near at hand. Uh, uh, that's true. Isn't it more likely, Mr. McCarthy, that this story of going shooting on an impulse and hearing a cry of cooey is a fabrication, and that in point of fact you followed your father? No, no, look, I left pool? the farm shortly after he did. That's true. But I didn't follow him. What was the point upon which you and your father had the quarrel, please? I should prefer not to answer. I'm afraid I must insist. Well, it's really impossible for me to tell you. It had nothing to do with the tragedy which followed. My father and I were always quarrelling. Very well. Since you will not tell us what the quarrel was about, will you pray tell us what the result of it was? I was very upset. He said some very unjust things to me. I left him at the pool. My father was dying, sir. He'd been struck down by someone. Someone who wore a cloak. What's this, Mr. McCarthy? We've heard no word of a cloak. What cloak is this? When I returned to the clearing, I, I saw a cloak by a tree. What sort of a cloak? An ordinary cloak. A plaid one, I think. Where is this cloak? It vanished, sir. It vanished? So there is no cloak? Well, when I looked again, it had gone. I see. It was there, but it had gone after my father died. <gasps> Come now, Miss Turner, you mustn't distress yourself. But you believe James is guilty, don't you, Inspector? You think him a murderer? Inspector Lano represents the official mind, Miss Turner, and we know well enough the workings of that. James and I have known each other since we were little children. I'm certain he didn't do it. Please say you're certain, too. I certainly hope we may clear him. You give me hope. There is such a thing as being too quick in forming a conclusion, Mr. Holmes. And there is also such a thing as pondering the unanswered questions, Inspector Lanner. Now, why, for instance, did McCarthy Sr. go down to the Boscombe Pool? Well, we shall probably never know that now. But young James must have followed his father, no matter what he says to the contrary. Indeed? For what reason would he have just gone out shooting? Perhaps to kill something. People who live in the country sometimes do you know. Excuse me. I am just... Mr. Sterling. May I inquire, please, as to the exact nature of your relationship with James McCarthy? I 
Beg your pardon, Mr. Holmes. Your concern for the young man is very natural, but what exactly are his feelings for you? I... Hmm? I think James and I both realised that someday we would wish to marry. But of late he has become cold towards me and... My father has set his face against the match. That is true, Mr. Holmes. Now, why is that, Miss Turner? I'm not sure. Until about six months ago, he seemed not to be concerned. But recently... <laughs> well, well, we mustn't tie you any further just now. Lana, perhaps you'll be so good as to see Miss Turner to her carriage. Of course, Mr. Holmes. This way, Miss Turner. Goodbye. Poor pretty creature. What? You see no ray of hope either, what? Well, the case against young McCarthy, it, it's so black, Holmes. On the contrary, Watson, all the evidence against him stems from his own testimony. There is no invention there. It's much too curious. What can it mean? Then you believe he is innocent? I believe in honest men, my friend. Poor pretty creature. Alana. Can you arrange an interview with McCarthy for me, please? Why, certainly, Mr. Holmes, this evening. Oh, excellent. And what inn in the town would you recommend? The head of a charons in the high street. Thank you. Watson, what are you doing? Come along, we have work to do. Why did Lana go into the pool, I wonder? Mm -hmm. Lana? That, that, that left foot of his with its inward twist. It's left its mark all over the place. It's going to make things very difficult. Hmm.
Well, Holmes? Hmm? Ah, Watson. Yes? Yes. Take care of that stone. What for? It's the murder weapon. Hmm. And now it seems I must find a man with a limp. Is it true, Moran, as Mr. James testified, that he and his father were always quarrelling? What's that to do with me, sir? Is it true? Ah, uh, dogs on the street corner, they seemed, often as not. Now, if you ask me, it was more the father's fault than the son's. And what did they quarrel about? What is it you want with me, gentlemen? If you have a question to ask, direct, ask it out. And I'll answer as best I may. But I'll not be a territory. Very well, Moran. Did you visit the Boscombe Pool at about noon on June the 10th? That's a bad leg you've got there, Moran. Ah, Doctor, not worth the concern as a medical man had waste on it, for it'll never be well. How'd you get it? In the cavalry, abroad. Not Afghanistan. I should say this farm was a good little holding, Moran. I suppose Mr. James McCarthy inherits everything? Yeah. What's the to inherit? McCarthy never owned this place. He had it from Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner? Ah, his old friend from Australia. Well, McCarthy rented the farm from Mr. Turner. <laughs> Never paid no rent. Not the likes of McCarthy. A kind of tick in the flesh of the earth, he were. Never worked for his keep, no, nor never paid neither if he could avoid it. But I'll tell you this much. He were a bad one, McCarthy. Many's the time I've had a beg for me wage, like a pauper. Yet how could I leave him, knowing as he'd flay the poor beasts till they dropped without me here to stay his hand? Well, I'm glad he's gone. Glad. Afghanistan. Now, just a moment, Moran. Where did you see service abroad, please? Well, different places. Africa, one time. Anywhere else? Another place, a long time ago. And where was that? The colony of Victoria. Six weeks. Never a step outside this room. The doctor says it could be six weeks. Damn the doctor. Jack Jones has had enough. He'll fight an enemy on his two feet. But he will not. Oh. Who the hell is this? Mr. Sherlock Holmes, brother. Oh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, eh? Well, this is a turn up, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Mr. Sherlock Holmes, eh? I'll take care not to tie him. Don't worry. Thank you. A fighter, Mr. Turner. Well, I admire a man with the courage to fight against his difficulties. But in your case, it must be second nature. After your years in Australia? Aye, uh, it was a tough life, the gold fields. And yet you reaped a rich reward. Aye. Uh, a reward which you shared most generously with your old friend William McCarthy when he too returned to England. Ah, uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, whatever provision I may have made for Bill McCarthy as my own business, 
He was my mate in Victoria. What else could I do but help him when he was harder? Oh, then he came back to England the poor man. Ah, yes, he never did have the luck, did Bill. Not even in death. He struck down by the hand of his own child. Yet you were not deceived by his son, were you, Mr. Turner? Long before there was any reason to think ill of him, you had already observed enough of his character to forbid a marriage between him and your daughter. Uh, is that what you've come to talk about? Why, if you please, were you so sure that James McCarthy wouldn't make Alice a good husband? Uh, because he was Bill's spawn, wasn't he? He was Bill's spawn! Uh, uh, yes. Mr. Holmes, Bill McCarthy was my mate, but not as you'd call a decent man. He was cruel and grasping. Mm, like father, like son, I reckon. Why not, eh? Listen. By thunder. You hear it? Hear yeah, what? The coach. The coach! The coach is coming, lads! The Cobb's coach! Coming round the turn now! The coach! Come for the coach, damn ya! The golf bears coach! Uh. you noticed that, sir? Why, Dr. Watson, the reason I went into Boscombe Pool was to rake around. Oh? Find out if some weapon had been thrown in there. So you yourself were not convinced that the murder had been done with the gun butt, Inspector? Ah, oh, there was blood on the butt, yes. But no sign of skin or hair. Interesting. Tell you something else. Old McCarthy was quite a hated man in Boscombe Valley. And sorry to be late, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Holmes, what news of Moran? Well, he certainly is not our murderer. Indeed, Holmes. No, he didn't know McCarthy in Australia. They were there at different times. Well, what about the leg, the limp, the, the footprint? His boots are a good size smaller than those of the limping man down by the pool. How do you know? Please. I measured them. Lana, can we see the prisoner now, please? Of course, Mr. Holmes, officer. Thank you. McCarthy, allow me to introduce Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Mr. McCarthy, delighted gentlemen. Thus Caesar and his cohort take their places in the imperial box. Ave moritur te salutant. Oh, pessimistic, Mr. McCarthy. But then no doubt a classical education can provide a man with words for any extremity of feeling. It was my father's only good gift to me, Mr. Holmes. Now, Mr. McCarthy, I can only help you if you make up your mind to be completely frank with me. What, pray, was the quarrel about between you and your father on the afternoon of his death? I have already said in court that I cannot speak of that. It is impossible. Why is it impossible? It is simply impossible. McCarthy. Then will you tell me this, please? During his time in Australia, did your father have anything to do with Cobb's coaches? Cobb's coaches? Holmes, what's on earth you know, please? Well, now that you come to mention it, Yes, I, I think he told me once. He'd been a driver for a couple of years. Huh? I am sorry to say that few people seem to be saddened by your father's passing, Mr. McCarthy. Are you? That is not the question of a gentleman. You believe yourself to be very different in character from your father, don't you? There was hardly a single point of similarity. Why do you insist upon shielding him? Shielding him? Yes. We can only assume that you do not wish to reveal the cause of the quarrel between your father and yourself because you believe in some way it might tarnish his memory, Mr. McCarthy. You think that? You think I'm refusing to speak because my... Oh, dear heaven! I'm not concerned for my unfortunate father's reputation. What I fear for is the reputation of a lady. A lady? Miss Alice Turner. She's not to be involved, Mr. Holmes. I understand. No, she must not be. Look, I refuse to have a... My father, on the afternoon of his death, and for some time before, had been trying to convince me that it was my duty to marry Miss Turner. Your duty? Yes. He knew I loved Alice. 
Mr. Turner had forbidden the match, but my father wanted me to defy him, to steal Alice away. Well, I ran from him, wishing death on his head, willing it. But if, as you say, you love Alice Turner, why didn't you want to obey your father? Because Alice Turner and I can never be married. What did you say? No. Whether I'm acquitted of my father's murder or convicted, it makes no difference to that. Well, it doesn't take much imagination to guess why my father wanted the match. But even he didn't know what an impossibility he was asking. You see, I can never marry Alice Turner, the woman I love. Because you are married already to someone else. you know he was married? A very simple deduction, Watson. I had seen the mark of a wedding ring on his finger. Now, shall we try the local cider before making a further call? Stand off. <laughs> we going out again, Holmes? I fear so. This evening? Mm -hmm. well, what about dinner? Oh, that can wait. I beg your pardon? Landlord. Hey, yes, sir. Two tankers of cider, if you please. Two tankers of cider it is, sir. Watson? Mm -hmm. I wish to show you something. Something I purchased this afternoon. Ah. You see? <clears throat> what part of the world is that? The colony of Victoria. The gold fields embracing the major coach routes were about here. I don't understand. Now, Watson. Australia and things Australian have loomed large in this case. That curious call of cooey, remember? Now, if that was not meant for young James McCarthy down by the pool, it must have been for somebody else who would also understand its significance. Another Australian. Excellent. And that dying croak of a rat. Croak of a rat? Watson, look. What do you read? A rat. And now? Ball a rat. Oh, Ballarat. Ballarat. A famous town of the gold rush days. Perhaps that is what McCarthy was trying to say when he died. Ballarat. But why? To identify his murderer. Uh, an Australian from Ballarat. A man who limps and possesses a plaid cloak. Extraordinary. Mm. You know, it's a very odd thing, Holmes, but uh, for some reason or other, that name Ballarat has a just familiar ring. Yes, Watson. Perhaps if you were to cast your mind back some 10 or 12 years to the overseas page of the Times. Oh dear, 12 years. A bush ranger. What? Well, highwayman. Highwayman? Mm-hmm. Great Scott, yes, a, a highwayman. Yes. Yes, yes. yes, a trail of crime and robbery, appalling. Mm -hmm. uh, he was never caught, you know. Nope. Uh, what was his name? It was... No, don't tell me. Uh, Black Nat. Black what? Black Luke. No, 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 try again. Tom? Black Jack. You've got it? Blackjack of Ballarat. Precisely. Yes, but how on earth could you Ah, oh, thank you. Your turn, Watson. What? Your turn. Again? Yes. Your very good health. <sighs> thank you, sir. Oh. You're really handed this time, didn't I? Easily thing. Oh, no, my girl. Now, I've had as much of you as I can stand. You pack your bags and get off. 
But I haven't my fare back to Bristol. I whistled for it. Tried to help you, I did. But you took advantage, didn't you? Right then, what about my wages? Uh, you madam, in gin. <clears throat> you mean I'm to get nothing? That's right. Shylock! Miser! Shylock! Miser! Get your hands off me! Oh, yeah! Never you I care? Yeah, Don't you touch me! I'll be better off without you, you see if I'm not! Better off without skin flints! I don't need the likes of you! I left alone you! Get off of me! I'll tell you what you are, then you see if I don't. <laughs> My apologies, gentlemen. Not at all. Oh, that girl. There's been more trouble than she's worth ever since she's been here. Mm, she certainly does not appear to have the most even of tempers. She's only come to these parts to be with her husband. Now he's been took up by the police. Indeed. Oh, the murder. He a McCarthy boy, you know. What? He is married to that creature? Oh, so it seems so. Then you say he's a decent sort of boy for all he killed his father. It's a rum business. Holmes. Yes, yes, Watson. I will have a word with that young lady. <clears throat> uh, do you require my assistance? No, no. Have a care for your silo. Uh. Wait for me here. Willingly. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. My father, he refuses to rest at all now. And he's so weak. I think... I think he's dying. Mr. Holmes. Ah, I was expecting a visitor, but not in the likeness of you. Surely you should be in bed, Mr. Turner. No. That window. Leave it. On a chilly night. Leave it, I say. When my visitor comes, he must find his way unbarred. And me, ready to fight. To fight. At least let us persuade you to wear your cloak against the evening chill. Your plaid cloak. And take a cigar. The finest Indian, I perceive, giving that distinctively pale, thick ash, which leaves its identity even when dropped to the ground. And your stick. No doubt, if a man in your state of health were to attempt to walk without it, the result might well be a queer, lurching gait not unlike that of a man with a limp, especially if he tried to be energetic. Then, you know. I resisted the conclusion for a very long time, Mr. Turner. It just did not seem to me possible that such a sick man could make the journey from here to the Boscombe Pool. Bill McCarthy sent me a note saying that he wished to see me, urgent and private, and suggested the Boscombe Pool. I, I knew I must go. I went out those windows. I knew his call would tell me where he was waiting. Down Bill McCarthy. It was a good act. 
<laughs> My best in many a day. How can you say that, Mr. Turner? McCarthy was your friend. What? It's true, Holmes. You said to yourself that in Australia, Mr. Turner and Mr. McCarthy were the very Mates. best of friends. You believe what I gave out as a cover for the dead? Bill McCarthy was no mate of mine. Bill McCarthy was the worst enemy a man ever had. Ah, how about this? This, this will not do, gentlemen. A man can't fight from a chair. Uh, so, Mr. Holmes, what say you of the mystery of Jack Turner? and the mate that was his enemy. I say McCarthy was blackmailing you. When he returned to England, he demanded his farm from you. And when you fell ill, he began to demand your daughter for his son, so that after your death, he might have control of your estates. Correct. But why should such a blackguard hold over me? Because he knew a great secret about you. He knew you were no simple digger who had struck it rich in Victoria. He knew that you were Black Jack of Ballarat. A man makes bad mistakes in his lifetime, gentlemen. But he does not. He does not expect to pay for them to the last drop of his blood. Those days. Those days there are easier ways of laying hands on the riches of the gold field and grubbing in the earth for them. There were those fools of miners made a strike. They'd taste their luck in rum and head for the nearest town with their gold. And all me and my men had to do was to persuade the coach driver to stop. One day the driver was Bill McCarthy. Oh. I never meant to kill, but a drunken miner tried to rush me. And up there in his box, Bill McCarthy saw and kept all in his heart not to inform against me, but to wait his moment till I had a position in life and a daughter to be concerned for. And then, like a leech, have a fill of me. There at rest, gentlemen. Black Jack of Ballarat. Bush Ranger, gold thief, and twice a murderer. I have prepared a statement which I must ask you to sign, Mr. Turner. It says... Yes, uh, I can guess what it says. Like father, like son. Oh, I pray God I was wrong. Uh, God, he's offering a challenge, isn't he? He knows I've held up many a coach every day. And right in, it's Black Jack of Ballarat, as he calls on you to stand. <laughs> Do you think I fear you? Do you think I'll turn and run? From that death's head on your shoulder? <laughs> Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! Pull up! The thing that distresses me, Holmes, is that young McCarthy and Alice Turner will never be able to marry. Well, why not, Watson? Well, he's tied to that dreadful barmaid creature, Stella. Oh, Bella. Well, I suppose when he was torn between his father's insistence that he should marry Alice and her father's opposition to it, Bella consoled him. Oh, no doubt she did.
Yet when I spoke to Bella the barmaid, she seemed perfectly willing to let young McCarthy go. What? Bella's loyalties are somewhat individualistic, Watson. I persuaded her to return to her legal husband. He's a seaman. His name is Arthur. Bigamy! The world is not always as we would have it, Watson. And now, if you please, silence for my pocket Petrarch. Outrageous! Scandalous! What in the world are we coming to? Oh, oh, good Lord! 